2.1 Basic Algebra. This is the basic algebra part of the ultimate revision guide for further maths GCSE. Now this video is not uh, um, meant to teach you specifically but to help you to revise to know what you're supposed to know and, and do you understand what you're supposed to be able to do. So it's going to give a few examples of the basic algebra skills you might need to be able to do the exam. Also to explain a few um, expressions. So we have this uh, three topic, three things that we need to be aware of here. How understand and use commutative, associative and distributive laws. Now these are not something that you need to specifically know how to do. Um, there are just things that you will have um, figured out for yourselves over time. But explicitly, just so that you know and seen this, seen this at once, you don't really need to know these words for your exam. The commutative laws uh, a commutative, if, if an operation like adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing is commutative, it means it doesn't matter which order you do it in. So for example, a plus b is equal to b plus a, so that's commutative. But with subtraction, it does matter which way around you do it, and a minus b is not always equal to b minus a. Um, so that's not commutative. So a adding is commutative, subtracting is not commutative. If you think about it, you should be able to figure out that multiplying is commutative and division is not commutative. So they're the standard operations that we're concerned with here. Associative laws are when you've got the operation done twice, does it matter which way, which way around you do it? So if we're adding, if we add a and b and then add c, so we do the a plus b first, is that different to doing the b plus c first and then doing a plus the b plus c? Well, that's not, it's always the same. So a, uh, adding is associative. Whereas subtraction, if we do a minus b first and then take away c, is that different to a minus b minus c first? And that's not always true, so that's not associative. Subtraction is not an associative operation. And distributive, distributive means that when you are doing two operations, so you're doing one first followed by another, so we're doing a times b plus c, then that's the same as doing a, b, plus a, c, so a times b, a times c, so a times b plus a times c, so it doesn't matter, the, well, it distributes over the addition, that's what it's called there, so that's that's the, the classic example of a distributive law, so that uh, multiplication is distribu distributive over addition, very difficult to say that. Okay, the, the uh, understanding and use of the hierarchy of operations, you should be familiar with the hierarchy of operations, so you have um, your sort of bid mass thing where you've got the brackets, indices, uh, multiplication, um, division, and uh, multiplication, um, addition, adding, and subtracting. Uh, division and multiplication are of the same sort of level. There's, there's no particular order which you need to do things there as long as you do those before you do adding and subtracting. Um, and when you've got adding and subtracting on the same line, you should just work from left to right. It shouldn't matter what order. Well, it, should, it should matter what order you do it in, but you must work from left to right when it's only adding and subtracting to do, which you should know anyway. The only one I'm going to draw your attention to is indices, because indices, there's two things that are common mistakes in indices. One that you should be familiar with. So if I was doing 3 times 2 squared, okay, a common mistake would be to do 3 times 2, which is 6, and then square that as 36 which is not true. You must do the indices before you do the times. So there's actually an invisible bracket around that index there. So 2 squared and then we times by the 3. So that's 4 and 3 4s are 12. So that's 12 not 36. And the other one that's very rare that people, a lot of people don't know, um, I'm not familiar with, is this sort of law. If we've got 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 3, it can be difficult to know. Is it? Should we do the squaring of the 2 first and then to the power of 3? If there was a bracket there, obviously you would do that first, but if there's no bracket, you're supposed to work from the outside in. So you work from the highest power down into here. So this is actually the same as 2 to the power of 2 cubed, which is 8. So that's 2 to the power of 8. That's not 4 to the power of 3, um, which is 2 to the power of 8 is um, 256, and 4 to the power of 3, that better not be 256, because that'll make me look stupid, 16... 4 to the power of 3 is 2, 4 to the power of 3, that's 64 isn't it? So yeah, no, it's not the same. So uh, be aware of that, you must do this, there's a bracket, invisible bracket there, so you do 2 to the power of 8, and then this here, you must do the bracket first. 
Okay, and all the other stuff um, you should be familiar with um, all the sort of basic algebra skills. Um, you should know what the difference between an expression, an equation, a formula, and an identity. The obvious uh, thing, identities are these things with the three lined equals. That means they're always true, it doesn't matter what values you use. Equations are something where you have an unknown, you're trying to find it. An expression has no equal sign, no equal. And a formula is something where you have um, something like v equals u plus at, where you're trying to find one value based on some other numbers that you're given. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples of those. Let's just uh, remove what we've done here. Okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, so here's some typical examples of the sort of algebra that you should be able to do. So the first one, simplify fully this expression. So knowing when to do things and how to do things is very important here. So looking at this top, um, looking at this uh, fraction, um, the top of the fraction, if we deal with that first, because essentially this, this fraction line means there's a bracket around the top and a bracket around the bottom. So it's the whole of the top divided by the whole of the bottom. So if we try to simplify the top first, we've got 6a, and we're adding a times 4a. So we must do this times first, so we must do 4a squared. So we've got 6a divided by 4a uh, plus 4a squared divided by 2a. So this divided by 2a goes into all of this top. So can we divide this by 2a and this by 2a? If we can, we can cancel it down. Well, clearly the 2 goes into the 6 three times, and then we must do the 2 into the 4 twice. Uh, often when people make mistakes here, they're just trying to, they're just looking for one thing that works and not. So maybe they cancel that a with that a. But you must, when you've got um, multiple terms on the top of a bracket, you must be able to divide by each term by the bottom. So the 2 goes into the 6, the 2 goes into the 4. So in fact, actually, let's, let's think about this in a slightly different way. So this is 6a over 2a plus uh, 4a squared over 2a. So the 2a goes into each of these expressions. So that's a, that's a little bit of a distribution law over, over division. Um, so this first one, we so that cancels down to 3, and a and a cancel. So that just leaves us with 3. And the second one, uh, 2 goes into 4 twice, and a goes into a squared once to leave you with a. So it's plus 2a. So this cancels down to 2a. And that's how we would leave it. Solving this equation, so multiplying out brackets, and uh, we get 3x plus 6, not forgetting to multiply the second one. Take away 4 equals 2 lots of 5, which is 10, minus 2 lots of x. Um, so we've got 3x plus 2 equals 10 minus 2x. Take the x's over to this side by adding 2x to get 5x plus 2 equals 10, take away the 2 to get 5x equals 8, divide by the 5 to get x equals 8 over 5. Okay, um, obviously, I should have said this at the start, when you're looking at this sort of thing, always try to do these before I go through them so that you know whether, whether you haven't had problems with these or not. So then we've got some factorising, um, some, some fairly, fairly standardish factorising. This is where you've got a square minus another square, so this is the difference of two squares. So if we have something like a squared minus b squared, that's the same as, or it's a, always the same as a plus b, a minus b. So we use that quite a lot in maths. So this first one um, is a squared. Well, what's the a? The a has to be the f has to be five x or squared. It has to be one term squared. So the twenty five comes from five squared, and the x squared comes from x. And 16 is 4 squared. So those are our two terms squared. So a is 5x. So we've got 5x minus 4 uh, times by 5x plus 4. And that's a, that's a standard thing you need to be familiar with and be looking for. When you see two squares that have been taken away, you think of this thing called difference of two squares. OK, and b, uh, factorising when we've got a multiple x squared. Um, there is quite a nice way of doing this. Um, if you're not sure about how to do these, this is um, if, you, if you've got your standard method, what you're trying to do is look for something that multiplies to give you four, but adds to give you minus seven when you have just an x squared. But you've got fifteen x squared, makes it complicated. So um, 
what you need to be doing is looking for um, something that multiplies to give you 15x squared, so that could be something like 3x and 5x, um, or 15x and 1x, it's bound to be 3 and 5, but uh, that's something multiplies to give you 2, uh, 4, so 2 times 2 or 4 times 1, and then when you combine those, you've got to multiply, they've got to subtract and add to give you minus 7, so one of them's going to be positive, one's going to be negative to get this minus 4. Okay, so there's quite a lot of options to try. Now this is, um, I was going to show you a quick method here that uh, you might get a little bit confused with. If you look at some of my other videos on this, you will, um, maybe I should link one in down the bottom here in the practice questions section to help you to learn how to do this. If you take this 15 and times this 4 by 15 to get 60, and make both of these 15x to start with, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to find something that multiplies um, to give us 60, but adds to give us minus 7. So we're looking for two numbers that are 7 apart that multiply to give us 60. So um, uh, 60 is, well, let's just think of some numbers. So we've got 20 times 3, uh, 15 times 4, uh, 12 times 5, oh, there we go, 7 apart, 10 times 6. So 12 and 5 are 7 apart, So if, and we want minus 7. So we make the bigger one. 12 because that gives us the, the minus on the 7 and the, the smaller ones 5 and then what we do is we, we really want to just to have 15x when we multiply these two together at the moment we've got 225x squared so we want 15x squared so we simplify this a little bit by finding what factors go into this so this could be divided by 3 to give us 5x minus 4 and this can be divided by 5 to give us 3x plus 1 so that, that gives us the solution. So we've got 5x times 3x is 15x squared. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4. Minus 4 times 3 and 1 times 5. When we add those together, we get minus 7. And I find this way is much... You could go through the sort of... Try and all sorts of combinations to get to the answer, but there's quite a lot of, of possibilities. And this idea where you multiply this by this to get the number we're trying to find the factors for to be add to give you this number and then we make this whatever's in front of here we put in front of both and then we cancel down at the end this is a much more straightforward way to get into the answer you don't have to try many combinations just three in fact okay in part c um this sort of um quadratic over a quadratic we well, just worked this out so that's nice and we've worked that out so we've got 5x minus 4 so when you see quadratics in a sort of fraction situation like this, a quotient, you should try to factorise them so that uh, each bracket will count. Hopefully you'll find something that will cancel. Um, and if this was like a, a A, B, C part question, which it is, then clearly they're connected. So there should be something that is a factor of both, and it's the 5x minus 4 that's a factor. So they cancel to leave you a 5x plus 4 over 3x plus 1. There's nothing you can cancel here. You shouldn't be trying to cancel this x with this x because it's got to be this whole expression goes into this and nothing will cancel there. Okay, so that's some of the basic skills that you should be aware of. Um, I'll put some links down here to some other practice questions from the Further Maths exam papers. Okay.